We get that having a heart condition is kind of a big thing in your life. But, more importantly, we get that as you progress into adulthood, you can do loads of things you've never been able to do before. And there's also other stuff, like starting to make your own way in life. This could be quite a nerve-wracking thing, this could be quite an exciting thing, but for everybody, it's a new thing. And the good news is, you're not on your own. This video from the British Heart Foundation will give you useful information to help your transition from paediatric care into adult care. It will cover other useful things too, like knowing how to describe your condition, tattoos and piercings, sex, smoking, basically all you need to know as you set out on this new adventure. We've found a host of other people who are already going through what you're about to, and they're gonna help you out by telling you some of their experiences and offering you lots of advice that they've picked up along the way. I was doing my A-levels, I was applying for university, I was just generally growing up, I was reaching 18, getting to the age where I could do what I want kind of thing, as long as my mum said it's fine. It is quite nerve-wracking the first time you are in that setting. You realise it suddenly hits you, you are growing up and you have a lot more responsibilities. Just the general atmosphere, even the waiting room, is completely different. You don't see tables with toys, you don't come in with babies around you, it's all older people. I was slightly less confident in myself, like approaching the reception desk and finding my way around because it was a new environment. Experiencing something completely different on your own is something that you have to sort of just get through for that first time and then eventually become more comfortable. Summarising your condition can be quite helpful, especially like when you have to go to the A&E and they ask you, do you have any like pre-existing conditions, especially if you have sort of uh, a really big file of medical notes like mine, it's really good to have like the quick snapshots of everything that you have so that you can get seen faster. Time management is really important. If you are taking time off your uni or school work, you need to be able to organise your work to catch up again on what you've missed out on or to catch up on the notes that you've missed. I think it's really good to listen on your appointments intently and sort of understand and learn the terminology. It's something you can even ask your doctor to explain when they're saying it. So if they say a word that you don't understand, you could ask them to explain it and they'll be happy to. I've used the British Heart Foundation transition pack whilst I was going through the transition period and still now. Um, I've put appointment letters in there so I can keep up to date with that. You can write your medications in there so you've got an up-to-date list. You can There's a section where you can write questions that you might want to ask. Something really important is to keep your parents informed about what's going on. You don't need to sort of, they're in the dark now that you're in control of it. They can still know what's going on and who you're seeing and how you found the tests and what you talked about in your interviews. Over this period of time, I've learned I can handle more and I'm a lot more resilient and just organised. Like you actually feel grown up in the fact that you are taking it all on. Um, and you have that responsibility of yourself now, it's not down to someone else, like I'm in charge of myself. I knew I was different from everyone else, which obviously I found it very difficult to cope with because I have a different kind of heart compared to everyone else's. Young people will probably worry about different things like their education, they'll worry about like where they're going to be in the future, what job-wise maybe like relationships that they'll have to make, either friendships or serious ones. But then if you add the fact that I have my heart condition, that adds a whole lot uh, of different troubles and tasks to just a traditional 16-year-old. The physical symptoms probably for me of stress would be get a lot more warm and more sweaty. I'd probably start to shake a bit more, just out of pure anxiety. I'd probably be lost for words whenever it comes to talking to someone. The main thing people would ask me about the scar is, where did you get it? People would have mixed reactions. When it comes to that, they would have been like, whoa, what's that? But then there's other people who are really accepting and think, oh my god, that's so cool. Like, that scar, like, it looks so cool. You'd probably need to contact your consultant or like any other like hospital staff that you've met. They might have recommendations of what you could do in order to reduce your stress levels. Possibly other things you could do is maybe find something like new to do or like a, like a new hobby and that might take your mind off things and hopefully help you. I'd probably feel more confident 
now because I've talked to other people who have heart conditions and I know that they have felt the same way and they've gone to the same things I have. There are loads of people you can ask questions to if you have any worries at all about your heart condition, like parents or carers, your cardiac team, and the British Heart Foundation and other support charities. The most important thing is that you still live the life that you want whilst managing your heart condition. So let's get to the fun part of being an adult, talking about the freedom to make your own choices. When you reach 18, the world opens up to you with new ways of self-expression and new experiences. Now, most of these can still be done with a heart condition, but some require a bit of thought or medical advice beforehand. When I was younger, I was very keen on getting a tattoo. I was interested on my back to get some things written in Chinese or Arabic writing. While researching getting a tattoo and the possible implications it would have on me, I came to the conclusion that it wasn't worth the risk with endocarditis that could potentially end my whole life. Infective endocarditis is a very serious but rare infection of the inner lining of the heart. So anybody who has congenital heart disease, particularly those people who have an abnormal valve or had previous valve surgery or intervention, are at risk of um, contracting this condition. What can someone do to protect themselves from endocarditis? So one of the main things that they can do is to take really good care of their teeth. So making sure that they're brushing their teeth twice a day, making sure they're going to the dentist regularly, and then making sure they avoid things like tattoos and piercings, and also making sure that they're in close conversation with their orthodontist if they are having orthodontic work to make sure they're avoiding abrasions in their mouth. So we'd want them to um, keep on top of that and, and discuss with their cardiologist and their orthodontist about that. I've luckily never felt left out by not having a tattoo or a piercing because it's not really a big part of life. Like maybe some of my friends will show it and we'll discuss it for five minutes and that's kind of it. You know, there are more important things in life. There are other ways that I express myself, which is through fashion, which is something I'm very into. Also, I guess it's helped me by um, helping me get on with my parents a little bit easier because I've been able to dodge that awkward question that many young people who want tattoos have or possibly even the big telling off when they have a tattoo without permission. <laughs> Any general advice for young people in this transitioning phase? Yes, definitely. If you have any queries, any questions at all, just get in touch, pick up the phone, drop us an email. We're always happy to answer any queries from you or from your parents if they have some questions as well, but always get in touch. I think the messages in schools obviously starts off you thinking about it, mm -hmm. for sure. I was told by my doctors to avoid it at all costs mm -hmm. um, and stay away from passive smoking, just really be safe. When you're a heart patient, you do get told, obviously, not to smoke and not to drink. Mm -hmm. And there is a massive temptation. I mean, being young, you just want to do everything your friends are doing. When I go out, I always tell Obviously, I'm always with friends that know about my heart condition, so if anything did happen, they can just mm -hmm. help me out. It is different being in a club space. I mean, it's hot, it's cramped, it's dark, and the music's really loud. Before you go in, you can have a word with a security guard, which is a really good idea, because some clubs, they like make you pay to leave or something if you want mm. to go for a smoke or something, but I just want air. So you just tell the security guard and they just let you in and out as you need spiking does occur but you just have to be so conscious of it especially with the heart condition i think just always looking after your drink i don't know about you but if i have a drink i cover it with my hand in a club so i hold it down for me it's um a little bit different i had a moment where um mixed energy drinks they're so high in caffeine content and other uh, chemicals it can affect your heart i got like sweats and palpitations after drinking it and i was like no i can't i can't do it to myself I think it's really important to know your body because if I drink and I know how my heart would normally react if I drink, then I know when something not normal is going on and I know when I need help. If your friends know what's normal for you as well, mm -hmm. just letting them know a heads up just so in case you can't talk or you're in the paramedics that they can help you out with that as well. And that's for every young person. Every really. young person really, With or yeah. without heart condition, yeah. you still need to know that.
Part of transitioning into adulthood is having to make sensible decisions about how you enjoy yourself and who to enjoy yourself with. Which brings us to the most embarrassing of subjects, sex. As you reach your late teens, it may feel like everyone you know suddenly gets into a relationship or starts to explore their sexuality. And that might leave you slightly nervous as to how your heart condition might affect you doing the same thing. Well, the good news is, as long as you're over the age of consent, your heart condition shouldn't stop you from having a healthy sex life or an intimate relationship with whoever you choose. You may have heard that some men might experience difficulties in getting or maintaining an erection. But this is often more down to stress and anxiety than anything else. If you're experiencing difficulties, then don't be embarrassed to have a quick chat with a medical professional with any questions you might have. And whilst we're on the subject of sex, if you want to avoid things like unplanned pregnancies or infections like gonorrhea, chlamydia or HIV, then the best thing you can do is use barrier-based contraception, like condoms. I took uh, contraception because I was suffering from really bad um, pains during my period. So I was offered them by my doctor. It took me months to decide whether I should actually end up taking them or not. And I spoke to a nurse first time round and explained about my heart condition, which she then advised me to speak to my doctor. First of all, I got put on the pill, which then I found they didn't work for me because I'm a forgetful person, nothing to do with my heart condition, I'm just forgetful. And then I decided to go for the implant just because they um, reduce your periods or can stop your periods, which is what I wanted really. But I'd say it's a good idea to go to your family planning first because they can give you all the information you need. I mean, every girl gets nervous about talking about periods and contraception and stuff like that, but I went in nervous, but then it was fine. It's just a breeze. I think it's important that boys take responsibility for contraception just as much as girls do. Contraceptives, um, in particular condoms, um, guard against sexually transmitted infections as well as pregnancy. It's very important as well to get yourself tested for peace of mind. And it's even free to get tested as well and very confidential. Young people tend to be worried about the strain that sex is going to put on their heart. So sex is physical activity, you're increasing your heart rate, you're breathing, you're putting pressure on your body and people are worried that during sex that something might happen so abnormal heart rhythms or they become a bit too breathless or they get lightheaded. If you're concerned about it in any way then you should always talk to somebody, speak to your specialist nurses, speak to your doctor um, and just see what they say but mostly speaking um, your doctor and nurse will tell you that sex is a good thing and that you should be able to do it quite safely. What should someone do when they're thinking about having a child? Plan. Um, you have to plan in advance. So unplanned pregnancies can be quite risky. Sometimes it's the drugs that you're taking. Um, sometimes your heart condition means that your body doesn't cope the same with pregnancy as other people's will. So if you're thinking about getting pregnant or you find out you're early on in your pregnancy, you need to speak to someone straight away so that they can monitor you. We need to make sure that the baby's safe and that mum is safe too. So women who have children who have, you know, who have heart conditions, you know, that happens all the time. But the reason it happens so successfully is because we monitor people. So we need to make sure your drugs are suitable. We need to make sure that your baby is okay. Um, also, you have inherited or congenital conditions. There's a risk that your baby might be unwell too and might have the same condition. So we also monitor the baby to see how they're developing, to see if we think that they may have a congenital heart condition like their parent does. Um, or you know, just make sure they're developing normally. Talking to medical professionals will provide you with knowledge, help and guidance on many aspects of your life. But you also have to take responsibility for the small day-to-day -day choices you make at home. Like what you eat. What you feed your body is your heart fuel. Being healthy, getting exercise and having a good diet can help your heart condition. Don't think of the things you can or can't have or can or can't do but rather think of the small changes that build up to make you generally healthier and fitter. Also, in the future, if you have to have any more procedures, the recovery time should be easier if you've taken care of yourself. Whereas an unhealthy lifestyle now could increase the risk of heart complications later on. I started doing martial arts, um, particularly kickboxing, when I was six years old. I found exercise particularly important um, and it really benefited me during school times because 
you can have a break from your school life, you can go and just release that little bit of stress and the anxiety from all your schoolwork. And at martial arts you can just go and hit a punch bag and it is really stress relieving. Not only does it keep your body healthy, but also your mind as well. It helps you to have that positive outlook on life. It really does have a massive benefit on every aspect of your life. So some people will be more comfortable doing a light exercise like walking the dog or going on a short walk. Other people may be more comfortable doing a vigorous exercise like a team sport or competitive sport. Understand how hard you can push yourself because for some heart conditions you can do pretty much any sport. Others you have to take it a bit easier. With exercise in school in PE classes I felt pretty left out because they would mainly play things such as rugby which I can't do because I can't have impact on my chest but I ended up really trying hard with um, certain athletic sports that I knew I had ability to be good at. When you first start off you might not be the most fit person but as you exercise more and more you can build up your fitness and you can then do that little bit more and then that little bit more again. Definitely in the modern day with social media there are more pressures for men to get a better body or something like that. The frustrating part is that often no matter how hard I work in the gym, the results don't show as much as they do on other people. But at the same time, it makes me all the more determined to not conform under the image of what someone with a heart condition should be like. Definitely speak to your doctor before you start any exercise. Make sure it is okay for you to do. Um, but even if you don't want to do anything competitive or a team sport, there's always other things you can do. Even getting off the bus or stop early. It doesn't have to be putting gym clothes on and going out to do exercise. I've always thought of food and nutrition as a medicine for your body. Obviously, with having a heart condition, you have to really focus on what you're feeding your body. It kind of just became natural that eating well was making me feel good. When you're eating junk and not taking care of yourself, it drains you out so much. Your diet is like the single most important thing. Without your health, you would have nothing. Being healthy is all about balance. I always make sure that I'm getting all my veg and fruit in throughout the day um, and drinking lots and lots of water as well. When you've got this rainbow in front of you, um, it's just amazing to see how many um, nutrients you're feeding yourself. I avoid salt quite a lot. The risks of having salt in your diet with heart condition, you can develop heart disease, high blood pressure. When you're looking for salt content in supermarkets, there's labels on the packages. There's like a traffic light code and it can tell you what's high in salt and what's low in salt. Cooking is all about replacing certain foods. If you tend to fry food, try and avoid it because it is really bad for your heart. Baking and grilling food is so much better. Fibre is really important for your diet because it helps with digestion. Fibre basically helps you feel fuller for longer. If you are worried about your um, diet and whether to take something out or add something in, it's always best to go and speak to your doctor. They might refer you over to a dietitian who can um, really help you out and see what you can change up. Fuel your heart right because it is the single most important thing in your life. Transitioning into adult care is all about you putting your own stamp on how you want to live your life. There are the big things and the smaller things. Through all of this, your medical team is here to support you. And as you get older, you gradually get to have more of a say and take more control over your life. And the younger you start, the better. So for the first time going to an adult ward, make sure that you ask questions to know where you're going, the directions to the right desk. Make sure that you have your letter on hand and prepare your journey before you get there. It's okay to take um, a family member if you want to, um, or friends. Ask questions and don't forget to take notes. You will have to remember that all like letters and appointments will now be directed towards you, so you will need to organize yourself and make the time for yourself to go to these appointments. If your address or phone number changes, particularly if you're changing from your parents' number to your number now being the main contact, make sure you update your medical team about that. It's so important. Don't forget your appointments and make reminders on your phone if you need to. Depending on where you live in the UK and your circumstances, after age 18, your prescriptions may or may not be free. So if you're struggling to afford prescriptions or if you want to know what happens in your particular area, please speak to your pharmacist. If you are having doubts or worries or you're starting to feel very unwell, it's to have 
a mobile number for your health team, so like your consultant or any other nurses that you may be friendly with, it's good to have the number on the phone in case any emergencies may happen. Feeling upset, confused and overwhelmed is perfectly normal. Just remember there's a lot of support out there, you just need to ask for it. There's also loads of apps and social media you can use to help find people who are going through the same things as you. Make sure you keep all of your information about your condition and your appointments all together. Um, there's a really easy place to keep it in your transition pack, which is nice and keeps it nice and organised. Your transition into adult care is going to be a unique time in your life with many different emotions. You will meet new doctors and nurses and leave behind familiar environments. The most important thing is to remember that you are not alone in going through this change. Families change as teenagers move into adulthood. Your friends will be going through their own changes. You might feel that this is only happening to you, but it's not. And don't forget that this is a period of transition. It happens over time and your parents, carers, medical staff are on hand to support you as and when you need it, as well as other young people at your clinic who will all be going through their transition the same as you. The British Heart Foundation runs support programmes for over and under 18s to help young people meet other heart patients, learn new skills and have fun. Meeting other people with a heart condition will make you realise that it's not just you thinking or feeling these things and there are lots of other people who are out there going through the same sorts of things you are. And remember, life is about having fun, going out and enjoying it to the full. You have many new experiences and some incredible opportunities waiting for you just around the corner. As your journey continues, use the support and advice around you to make sure that you never let your heart condition stop you from doing the things that you have your mind and heart set on. <laughs>